So I want to ask a question too for the chat to get involved with this one. So how do you decide between two figures you really want? I know it, you know, sometimes you obviously have budget, you have space. If you really want both figures, you might end up getting both figures, but sometimes you got to make tough decisions and you know, you might only have room for that one figure, or you only have the budget for that one figure, or you realize, man, I don't really need both of these. I just need one of these figures, or maybe it's the iconic version. Like we talked about, maybe you wanted to get this Loki or that Loki or, or yeah, the definitive version. Maybe you wanted that. Maybe you wanted the Iron Man Mark seven. And you're like, I can't decide between the Mark seven and the Mark five or the Mark three. How do you make that decision? So Kiko, what really plays into the decision-making process here? Because I know people are really going to want to know this because this, this is what we all deal with as collectors. There's a lot of great options out there. What do you think? Do not do as I say, or do as I say, not as I do, <laughs> because we, we all know that I do not uh, hold back when it comes to making a decision. But I did make a decision this week because we had three releases this week, and there was Jesse, which obviously you know, excited. Jesse's mm -hmm. here in the house. Um, but then we had the Centurion armor setup, suit up type of thing. I think that's one of the topics for today. That came yeah. out, and then literally the next day was the Infinity um, Ultron. And I was sitting there to myself. I was like, I don't need this Centurion, you know, because I don't, you, well, you've been to my spot. I don't have a lot of room left. Don't have a lot yeah. of room left. Right. And I'm like, okay, I'm literally thinking space wise. And I'm like, okay, this is going to only look cool if it's lit up with a USB. It means I have to wire the cord. Too much work. And it's a, essentially a power pose because it's literally one thing. I'm like, okay, that's out. Infinity Ultron it is. And that's how I made the decision. But I know a lot of people need to kind of ask this question for themselves. Do you really want it in the first place? Like when you're looking at two figures, if you're like, oh man, here's my two favorite figures or whatever. If it's, you know, Anakin and Darth Vader, or do you really want, you know, the one that's more iconic to, those are the questions you need to ask yourself. First of all, is which one do you really want? And you're like, well, I want both of them. Okay. Well, how do you decide then? So for me, because originally, before I decided to become an addict and go this route, I was actually making smart decisions and trying to really decide which one is going to look the best in my display. My first couple figures I ever got were Deadpool, Empire Strikes Back, Darth Vader, and um, and Boba Fett. Those are my first three kit, my first three characters. And I was like, okay, I got my Star Wars represented, I got my Marvel represented. And then I'm like, okay, then I just want a die cast figure. And I got an Iron Man Mark IV. Those are my first four hot toys. And for me, I'm like, I think this makes sense because I have a representation of things that mean something to me. Now, I, I was collecting all kinds of different scales. I was doing Funko Pops, Black Series, Marvel Legends, all that, all that stuff before I switched completely over to, to six scale. So when I said, okay, when I look at it that way, Darth Vader is the best representation that I can have in my display for a Star Wars figure. I'm like, okay, that's it. That's that. Iron Man's the best representation for a Marvel figure I can put in there. Deadpool's my favorite, one of my favorite Marvel figures. I can put that one there. And then as far as an aesthetic goes, man, Boba Fett's a really cool figure. So there we go. That's all taken care of for, for me. And they're also, they were readily available. I didn't have to pre-order them. They were in stock. Um, I think that's where you got to come down to is how hard you have to work to get it in there. If there's walls that you have to knock down, no pun intended. Um, but if there's things you have to go through to acquire it, like you have to pay over retail or, you know, go through different resellers. If something's in stock, it makes it a lot easier for your decision making because you can make some sound decisions and you can kind of weigh those options. But for me, find the definitive thing that represents what it is that you want to show. Do you want to show silhouette and presence? Then go for a big figure. If you want something that has sentimental value, get the one that has a sentimentality to you. But it's so hard. It's so hard, Will, to kind of limit yourself because I'm the wrong person to be asking. But if anyone is out there actually listening to me, I would say find a way to filter and funnel the things that you would say, this is my collection and this figure is the ultimate representation. It is the apex of my collecting. If you want to think of a collecting pyramid, what is the figure that goes at the top? What is the capstone? For me, Star Wars, it would be Darth Vader. And that's why I would put Darth Vader on there because that's Star Wars to me. That's how I do it. So everyone, what is your capstone on your collecting pyramid? That's how you narrow it down. There you go. Hopefully right. that made sense. Well, the one thing I would say, Kiko, that sounds a lot like tier-based collecting. 
So it is. I, oh I will say, you know, did I just sh- become a profit for tier. See, you did, bro. Shout out to Carlos on, on creating such a great system. But I will say I'll post a link in the chat for those who want to understand maybe what tier based collecting and see whether you like it or not. If you don't, that's totally fine. If it doesn't work for you, but it's a really good system. It's helped me a lot. It's helped my savings go up tremendously because I'm more selective and I'm actually more thoughtful about what I'm collecting. Everyone's going to be different how they collect and that's great, but it could work for you It's a system you might want to check out. That's how I decide between two figures. I even talked to Carlos about this because I was like, well, what happens really if two figures are in the same tier and you have to decide between those, right? Maybe you only have spot for one of them. He's like, that's a tough one. You're really gonna have to sit down and think about how does it fit in with the rest of my collection? And you almost have to create like sort of a sub tier. At that point, you're gonna have to be like, "Mm, okay, well, what do I really like about this character and why? Sometimes what he recommended, you can even watch the movie again and see how you feel about that character on a rewatch. That's a good idea. But Dean, how do you do this? How do you focus on figuring out what you want? How do you decide between two figures? Because a lot of times, say your budget for that month, right? And you're like, man, I got, I got, I got some money for one fig this month, and I'm kind of thinking it might be Bo-Katan, but it also could be Mando, right? What do you think? Yeah. yeah, it's it's hard, especially when it comes to characters like that, right? It's I don't necessarily have. Well, I mean, I did have another Mando at the time. But uh, when I was picking up Bogaton, I also wanted to pick up Snowspeed or Luke. And to me, I mean, Luke Skywalker is one of the most important characters in my collection. And so I try and get the Lukes that mean something. And when it came down to it, I was like, well, Snowspeed or Luke... Like, that's not even, like, a definitive look for Luke. I mean, even in that one movie, I would say Bespin Luke is more important. And I already own that figure. So it was kind of easy to be like, well, I'm going to pick bo But, like, for Mando, the only other Mando I had was the um, Durasteel Mando from episode one. And um, I could have bought secondhand the, the... best car mando very cheap but the new chrome one was coming out and i was like well i'd I'd just rather have bo katan at this moment because i do have another mando it's not my ideal mando because he only looked like that for one goddamn episode so um or at least two but looks so good Um, doing it he did (laughs) yeah i you're not wrong but you know i did choose bo katan because bo katan is a character i've wanted since clone wars I mean, she's a fucking badass. So the fact that I could even get a Bo-Katan now is pretty amazing. So I, it was a lot easier to pick Bo-Katan uh, between Mando and her. But like with like Luke and her, it was a little more difficult because I love Luke so much. But really, I just try and figure out like what can I live without? Mm. Like when it comes to like the game toys figures cloud and severoth i mean i missed the boat on that way before they sold out right so i was like cloud or severoth both are in the 600 bucks i mean now they're in like the thousands i think i cannot live without cloud he's my number one favorite character of all time i could live without severoth as much as i would like a severoth in my collection he's just not as important to me as cloud even though that game holds such a special place in my heart, my collection, I've, my whole desk is fond of these seven figures. You probably can't tell on those tiny screen, but it's <laughs> very proud. Yeah, of you, Dean. I love Final Fantasy seven, but I could live without a Sephiroth because I have a few more, but cloud uh, he's right here. I can't live without. So I spent the money on cloud. Now I got him at a really good price, but yeah, it's just kind of like in, in, 10 years or whatever what am i gonna really regret not having and uh, you know that's kind of how i that's a good way to look at it dean like thinking about you know i guess it's a little bit of fomo but it's healthy fomo you're you're saying what am i gonna regret not having in my collection you know am i really gonna miss this character and also dean i think you have to look at other opportunities to pick up that character i know there's always that we'd have the discussion of waiting for the definitive version and what that really means but yeah. like bo katan right even if you missed out on this mando bo katan there will oh. definitely there will be others there will be 100%. plenty of others yeah like, they already changed yeah. her armor for a yeah they version. changed her armor <laughs> and maybe this is the one you would look maybe spoiler, you like the bro, one with the spoiler 
Yeah, maybe the one, maybe the one you want, Kiko, is the one with the full blue instead of the other shoulder, right? But uh, you know, it, it's definitely one of those where you're gonna have multiple opportunities at characters. Like again, I've talked about Wen Wu as a perfect example. You ain't getting another Wen Wu, that's right? True. Like this is it, unless you want the suit version, but that's even harder to find. So that that becomes you know um, the question, right? So yeah. yeah, I don't know. For me, I, I think it, it becomes a which which do I consider more iconic? Which has more sentimental value to me, and which one is going to make me happier and make my collection better? It's sometimes, you know, sometimes as simple as that, right? And it's, um, yeah, it becomes a complicated matter, but you can simplify it greatly. That's what I would say. I'm changing my answer to what Dean said. The one I'm going to miss the most in 10 years. That's what I want. That's a great, it's a great choice. It's a great choice. Guys, let us know in the chat. And everyone's been uh, contributing. Keep going over my heart after I came in here. Like See, a... you came ready to throw down because <laughs> yeah. of that. Uh, I'm not a... That wrestling match. Yeah. Yeah, that wrestling. Poor match, Kiko. Was... He was like, "What the fuck did I do?" I know he was like, "What did I do?" Like, I didn't do anything. Yeah, but yeah, it's 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 pretty crazy. So we got a super chat here from Roll Me One Kenobi. Love that username, bro. Every time I read that username, I'm like, "This this is amazing." I'll just put chips in and let them fight out like small soldiers. Hey, that's not oh, a bad way to yeah. do it. Hell it's yeah. not a not a bad way to do it. Do you Archer guys remember that film? Chip. Yeah, Chip. Hazard, I was gonna say Archer. that is a underrated yeah that's Tommy a deep cut the gorgonites dude mm -hmm. yeah Hell see yeah. i don't even remember all that dean that's crazy oh yeah. yeah thank you so much romeo one kenobi that's very generous of you bro but yes small soldiers very deep cut reference love that shit that shit i used to watch that with uh my grandparents like way back because i was pretty young at the time we obviously all were so well dean's 46 so that's <laughs> not true do not believe <laughs> there that. was a rumor started out dean remember dean when they, oh, they was, <laughs> zach was. posted that and i was like is he really he looks fucking great i was like yeah it was my birthday he was like happy 46th birthday and everyone was like i didn't know you were that old i was like i'm not that old <laughs> It was great. You don't you don't uh, look a day over forty five, Dean. So it's all good, bro. I think I'm the oldest it's bitch here. Yeah, dude. But it's okay. You're the most experienced and mature and wise. Also, Kiko <laughs> is an excellent chef. He cooked every meal for me. So Kiko, and you, I you made that same took chicken. A picture. Yeah. I know. I almost took a picture last night. I went and did a new shrimp recipe with your leftover brown rice, by the way. Oh, um, I went ahead and made the, I made the brown rice and I had uh, some very nice um, air fryer grilled shrimp with some special dang dang sauce on it. So I think you would really like that one too. Nice. Next time I come, we're, we're going to eat the shrimp. Dude. Dang dang sauce? Dude, Dean, you got go to bang, you gotta go to Tennessee, bro, with us and we're going to we're going to hit the town and eat some chicken, bro. Yeah, go to Game Terminal and watch me dance inside. Yeah, dude, well, dude. That arcade, Dean, that is incredible. It's a free, basically a free arcade with all these games like Mortal Kombat and all this other old retro shit, and it's amazing. We also played Cornhole. That was pretty fun. Wow. Yeah. I think I don't know if Kiko won or I won. I think Kiko won, but I can't remember. So I don't know. I was too distracted by the two little kids that interrupted our game. We yeah, we played uh, two on two versus them, Dean, and we were just <laughs> killing them so bad. Kiko was like, all right, well, let's just stop keeping score. <laughs> like, we'll just play because <laughs> we were just destroying them. And it was, it was, they couldn't fun. even hit the board. God bless them. Yeah, yeah, they were so nice. Such a nice family, American family. So anyway, guys, let's move on to our next topic. <laughs> 